Now welcome to space, a place that's been so far undiscovered by us normal humans who aren't NASA or SpaceX astronauts or whatever cosmonauts there is out there. Or at least that's how it's been so far because commercial space travel is a thing and it's coming very much quicker than some people may believe. Yes, today we're going to talk about the company of Virgin Galactic again, owned by our daddy Richard Branson, who is off the opinion that if you have money, you can do anything, which is, I think, true. I mean, it also applies to this one right here. We'll more on that later, but whatever. Yep, Virgin Galactic, they developed this plane made to bring passengers to the skies. And no, this is not any weird concept of what is going to be in like 30 years. No, this is actually a thing and this very plane will probably fly around passengers paying passengers just like you and me okay paying passengers that are extremely rich just like only me yeah no really a, a ticket cost two hundred fifty thousand dollars that's just another point here but uh, what am i saying whatever this thing is coming to real life right now because there has been some big news recently for example on friday two days ago the faa officially allowed Virgin Galactic to fly passengers to suborbital or to suborbital spam sorry <laughs> yep they have a license now they could i think in theory already do this right they could already transport paying passengers to space right wait can you book a flight uh, here's the website fly with us ever wanted to go to space uh, private ass wait register your interest in virgin galactic are you how about you guys donate me a little bit of money here and we do this and then i i'm gonna be like the next sam chewy right yeah i think we've got a plan two hundred fifty thousand dollars is needed though yeah i wouldn't call the space flight that virgin galactic is actually introducing something that's made for everyone yeah <laughs> so we're gonna have to be happy with using the flight simulator now today right let's just talk about how this whole thing actually works okay as you can see we have three planes here in one plane it's very very weird and it's because this main capsule here which is actually the one carrying the passenger that's supposed to go to space is actually carried by another aircraft that uh, looks like this right we can we can press the space bar to separate these two um separate aircraft i mean separating these planes on the ground probably doesn't make too much sense but it doesn't it doesn't even work any no this is bad why doesn't it work oh no Good that we have that sorted out, but yeah, this is how it's supposed to work. You have this main plane that takes off. It does the job of taking off the, the whole thing, right? With the small actual passenger aircraft, um, it's uh, stuck on, right? And then when we're your mid-air, you can separate these two aircraft, which doesn't work. I pressed the space bar. It doesn't work. God damn it. And yeah, that is because this main capsule, for some reason, cannot take off on its own. Why can it take off on its own, actually? It has its own landing gear and everything. Okay, here's the explanation for the air launching thing here. Uh, ideally suited to commercial space flight for reasons of safety, passenger experience, and energy efficiency. That's all they say. So I'm guessing it's because of that. But yeah, apparently this middle console thing cannot take off on its own. It's got only got a rocket engine which is needed for flying into space obviously and yeah that kind of take off on its own so we're just gonna have to use the thing there and uh take off and it doesn't work god damn it but whatever let's just skip this whole very boring part here right and just jump into one of these actual working um, modules and just fly around really although i would like to try to take off this plane just like a, a normal plane Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. That's uh, some energy right there. Let's try to take off. There we go. Daddy Branson, I think we have now proved him wrong. The Virgin Galactic can take off on its own. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, in theory, it probably can, but like, it's probably, well, a smarter idea to use this launcher system. Now, what we cannot forget about this plane as well, of course, is that this is, of course, a rocket powered aircraft meaning it's got a rocket inside meaning it's got very much speed of course and uh, it needs that for the exit of planet earth and um, we've run out of fuel probably yeah running this plane at full power probably isn't particularly recommended we fuel up the plane if you're running this at full power it only lasts a minute by the way this fuel tank which is uh, interesting but let's go to like 70,000 feet now which is the perfect altitude and let's just get higher see i'm a very professional pilot of course and by the way here the cockpit um it isn't particularly beautiful this is how this plane has been flying around for the last 10 years yes really this is not any new concept a first flight has been made years ago it's just really now about bringing past passengers on board too now we are at mach 4 by the way mach 4 four times the speed of sound and uh we are uh i think leaving the earth atmosphere soon all right we're now hitting a hundred thousand feet 
And we can already see the stars. How they shine for you. Good. And we are dying. Holy moly. Flying this plane really to space is probably quite a complicated thing. New friend, I don't feel again. You have to be joking. Totally realizable. I mean, it works in real life. It doesn't really work here. Maybe I'm not that good of a pilot. Indeed. <clears throat> Fuel tank back up again. We are, now, we are kind of in space right now at 250,000 feet. And, well, this plane does fly somewhat. Actually, no, I don't have, really have control. I don't have control and we're running out of fuel. Let's go ahead and do the re-entry thing now. Uh, we are, I think we're going way too fast. Mach 10, 10 times the speed of sound. Yeah, this plane is faster than any other plane right now. I mean, we're not in the Earth's atmosphere. We're getting close to the California desert again. So it is time to really come in for a landing. And now this is where the tricky part begins. Uh, flying this plane by hand is a... Not a particularly good idea. I have zero idea of what I'm doing, by the way. But we have actually our departure airport down here. I can already see it. And, um, and I think in real life, it would be totally falling apart right now. This is great. Mach 10 at uh, 80,000 feet. <laughs> we are faster than the X-15, the fastest plane on this planet, everybody. This is just great. I think in real life, this plane would totally not handle it. It would probably end up as like a meteorite just completely burning uh, up and um, <clears throat> dying. But this is just great. We have now hit 50,000 feet and we are at a good speed now and uh, this is actually working quite a lot better now i properly have control so it is time to land um at our airport that's to the right of us you can maybe tell it all right let's do this now our airfield is ahead it's right here we're basically now a glider plane by the way just like the space shuttle used to land so uh, our motto for this landing is now going to be we're not going to be able to go around right <laughs> all right heading towards the dried lake bed now let's go ahead and put the landing gear down already i think that's a smart idea and uh that's all we'll need, probably. I guess, I hope. Just work plane, okay? Alright, let's do this now. I may be able to actually even do a butter landing. Let's come in for that one. Now, touching down. Alright, that's been butter. Let's go ahead and stop now. We can actually use the inbuilt parachutes here. Oh, damn. That's been way too strong of a parachute. Holy moly. I... I... Oh, well. Alright, but that's worked. <clears> hmm. <throat> Somewhat. This was probably the worst operation we've ever done on the Swiss Air One channel. Not particularly good add on this one, is it? I mean, <laughs> just a 2D cockpit. This is, by the way, payware, right? You have to pay for this, and it doesn't even work at all. The launching didn't work. This parachute did not work at all. What the hell is this? But, you know, the real plane flies better. That's the point. <laughs> so, yeah, if you have a leftover $250,000, you can do this. I mean, who doesn't? So, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, goodbye. Now, thank you to all my members here on YouTube, like Block, Emite, Mubarak, Mike, Ethan, uh, Darren, Stefan, Ian, uh, Oman the Human, Rafael Brokowski, Junk in the Trunk, Moritz, uh, Toby, Great Grandpa John, Government Pasta, Calamity Airlines, Kelly Chaos, New York, uh, Tyler Park, Chista Ritos, Shadow, Anime Planes, Razor One, X Men Show, Lair, The Slama, Futuring, Kellen, Me by You, Captain Cameron, Spiro, uh, Gary, Norwegian, Bajel, and Pyrology.